I'm Martin 13. Welcome to our show, World Tiger. Building Dragons. Today we are continuing with some of World Anvil's summer camp prompts. Summer camp is a program set up by the World Anvil team to promote world building as well as the community in general. There'll be a total of 33 prompts all throughout the month of July, so if you're looking to win some prizes for your submissions, don't miss out. World Anvil is a free in-browser tool that has everything a world builder may ever need. They also have some really incredible subscription options, so go check those out as well. They're totally worth it, totally affordable. If you're interested, please go check them out. But in any case, I think it's time we got down to the prompt. Let's do it. What is the prompt? Today we get to describe a counterculture from our world. Interesting. It's a little weird. Sure, but, but I like it. I'm interested. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this mm -hmm. one. You gonna go with uh, Theatrum again? Yeah, yeah. And you? Okay. I'm I'm gonna try Nora out. I'm gonna see what I can come up with for Nora and see if that yields any fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime, for all of you, understand that the two of us have kind of given ourselves some parameters to complete this project. Each of us has 30 minutes to answer the prompts. Each of our submissions have to be at minimum 300 words. After the 300 words and our 30 minutes have passed, we're gonna come back together and share what we came up with. Some of our best ideas have come from collaboration. Absolutely. You ready to do this? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Time to escape! And now we're back. We're back. Okay, after 30 minutes, what are your feelings? How do you, you feel I about this one? I really liked the format of this part in World Anvil. I don't know if I did it right, um, but <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um, the way that they had it here was they asked for a counterculture, but then they took us to the ethnicity part. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of uh, a, a lot of cool sections that I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'll see. What did did you want to elaborate on? I, I kind of know what you mean because the first uh, part was uh, their naming naming, scheme. and it just went into and that like, was. I did spend about 10 minutes on this. Well, okay. A third of my time went into naming schemes, and I okay. realized, I was like, oh, this is great, but not the meat of what I'm trying to talk sure, about. Sure, sure. Um, I do recall seeing um, World Anvil's Instagram post about this prompt specifically, and um, some people were very confused about this, and the way that they talked about it mm -hmm. was... Um, a counterculture it doesn't have to be like a specific group of people it could be um a movement like uh the feminist oh. movement or the uh <clears throat> excuse me the uh, black lives matter movement mm -hmm. all of these things that are very topical in this moment in history these are all countercultures they're not Got with it. the norm but okay. i see where the confusion came from because i kind of had that same idea when i went into it and the first thing that we got to work with was naming schemes and i was like i don't have a naming scheme for this group. right but I, I was able to kind of figure out some stuff mm -hmm. here and there well hearing from that then i think i actually did a pretty good job of what i was trying to get across so mm -hmm. did you want to start off with yours um N no. I'll go. I'll no, go. I Let's all start. start. Okay. I don't, I don't like starting. <laughs> okay. So, for mine, I started with um, this group of people, and I called them Templars of the Moon. So, in Theatrum, there are eight moons, each to represent the eight gods um, that kind of rule over Theatrum. Talking about the moons. Here's where this kind of becomes an issue. Um, Throughout all of this, um, when you look up into the sky, usually at one point you'll see at least four of the moons, at least, most of the time you'll see all eight, but in that lunar cycle, at least one of them's gonna be full most of the time. So that comes into an issue with werewolves. What happens when you are a werewolf and it is full moon, probably, you know, 90% 90. 90 of the time, it's going to be a full moon at somehow. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the math on that one, but um, what, how do you even work? How do you process that? You know, every single night you go to full power and then you wake up exhausted. And then the next night you go back to full power. What does that do to you? So, um, werewolves aside, they are 
I mean, they're hated by society, completely outcast by society. There is no, like, there is no sympathy for them from mainstream society, which is where Templars of the Moon come in. They believe that, yes, they're destructive and foul and they're just the worst of the worst, but they were still people and still deserve to be treated as such. They still left behind families. They still left behind things that they wanted to do in society. And so this group of people kind of is that bridge between the two. So how it really began under, let me see, underneath the customs tab in World and on World Anvil, they had a culture and cultural heritage. So that kind of is like, where did this kind of begin? And so for mine, a um, there was a man named Mr. F uh, Mr. Farhell in Rodenef, and he got a case of lycanthropy, and his wife, Elvina, kind of started this whole thing where she's like, I'm not really just gonna up and leave this life that we started together. Mm -hmm. I Let's try and figure this out. And so they kind of built their own safe house on the edge of town, and that's sort of where it began, and now it's come into this mini culture of bringing in people who um, either are affected or families that have been affected and kind of creating this new family dynamic of um, supporting the werewolves. Now, <laughs> people think they're crazy because... I wonder why. <laughs> because every single night, they're kind of running the risk of every single one of them being slaughtered. Um, but they also had things in here like beauty ideals, gender ideals, courtship ideals... Um, underneath the ideals tab and so going into like beauty ideals they're dealing with a bunch of werewolves they don't really care <laughs> too much gender ideals they're actually pretty equal because um, women do tend to take up more of a protective role and they have to be they when mr. Farhall left and got with struck with that case of lycanthropy Elvina really had to step up and become more than what a woman would have been in the society at the time. And so, um, kind of that, no, you can do both, you know, if your wife gets tr struck with a case of lycanthropy, you gotta learn how to cook and clean, and that's something you're gonna figure out. <laughs> so, um... You're gonna learn then, how to keep the home. You're right, you're right. But and it's, she's gonna learn how to, you know... Be the breadwinner. Be, right, right. Well, she's got to figure her own stuff out. She's a werewolf now. Well, okay. But... <laughs> and vice versa. If, right. if the wife is struck with lycanthropy, the husband has to oh, pick right. up the I slack. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but it's also this mini culture is going to be there to help you out. And so that's that's the whole idea is that they're there to help and they want to support these things. Um, courtship ideals. I mean, um, in the customs tab, I was able to add a myth or a legend um, that there was a there was a legend of this child that was born from a werewolf and a human, and they were able to maintain their the mind of a man while they were in this wolf form. So they can walk around at full power on a full moon as a werewolf and still process like a man. And so um, it's this idea that they... They want this half werewolf child to be reborn again, so they do kind of support that. Um, those relationships, as far as courtship, they're like, "Hey, there's this werewolf that's your same age. You wanna, you know, maybe meet up during the daytime, or you know, like that sort of thing." Um, <laughs> one other thing, <laughs> I'm just yeah. One other thing that I had, the other only cool thing that I had. Um, that I was kind of proud of was their dress code. I had in here that they all wear a very simple chain, a small device around their neck. So if they get caught in a situation where they are being attacked by a werewolf, it's almost like a little dagger that they pull out. So a button on the end of it, they push it and a small blade will pop out. A silver blade will pop out. An even smaller blade will also pop back through their thumb. So it is kind of like if you are attacking a werewolf, Using this in a situation, you're also going to hurt yourself. Why'd you put yourself in this situation? Just don't. 
Interesting. What was your thinking behind using the term Templar? Um, I went on thesaurus.com and I was like, hmm, that's a new word. Was Templar? Yep. Okay. That was it. Okay. Interesting, because when I, because when you first started talking about it and you mentioned the, the organization is called Templars of the Moon, my and you started talking about werewolves, my immediate thought was like self-righteous knights running around to slaughter these uh, like these heathenous werewolves it's kind of the and it's the opposite which i think is really cool in terms of like taking the per taking what i had perceived as just from reading the title just mm -hmm. from knowing the title and flipping it on its head because it's something different they're not against the werewolves they're, they're protecting advocating them. they're yeah. protecting them yeah they're advocating and that's really interesting that's really cool mm -hmm. um so did you get into naming schemes? What was that all about? I did, I did. It was more so naming schemes from that region. So the region where these people are based in would be the southern portion of Rodeneff and the northern portion of Fuglen. So I got more into like what the regional naming schemes would be, not necessarily the naming schemes of this counterculture. Um, it will probably be something that I go into and spend way too much time on because <laughs> I love doing, I love naming things. It's one of my favorite things. So, but yeah, that's pretty much all I had. Can you talk a little bit more about this? Because um, I, I kind of got a little bit lost when you're talking about the pendant. The pendant that is worn is mm -hmm. worn by Templars. Yes. They're worn by the Templars. Right. So... To me, this is you're gonna have to kind of help strip this idea away from me of like the Deus Volt temple, right. <laughs> Templars. Um, but so they're advocating for the werewolves. They have are they witnessing? Or are they evangelic? Where they're like literally going out and seeking out these forsaken souls who have been stricken with lycanthropy. Yeah. So it is more so them going out and the, their main basis is. Having a place where if you or one of your family members is struck with lycanthropy, you can go to this small community, live with them, and live a semi-normal life. They also will go out and find werewolves in the wild and kind of bring them to this area to help reacclimate them into a semi-normal life. Okay. If that's what they want. Okay, so so now the image that I kind of have in my head are, are these pilgrims, at least, that are going out. Everyone has this pendant, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So it's, like, if they have to, it's a safety thing. Okay, yeah, but they have that, and that is, they actively want to use that, or that is like a last That is ditch. a last minute, you messed up, or something all, like, this is, everything's gone wrong. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And so now you have to use that. And it is almost like a... It, it's just a last ditch. It's a last, last ditch, ditch effort. effort. But it is a reminder of mm -hmm. the seriousness of the situation. Right, that you right. I think that's with. what I was trying to go with. That was one of the last things I wrote down. So I was like, and this is now what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, so you talked, more, you talked a lot about their ideals. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked a little bit about their customs. Uh, was there anything else that you got into that you were really interested in? Not really. I think that's where a bulk of my information went. I got into a little bit of their common customs and their traditions. Um, a lot of what they do on uh, when it is the full moon, um, which is, like I said, 90% of the time, um, they will... Um, probably less than 90%, but they will go into these bunkers kind of underneath where they are living and kind of hide out um, and almost do like, I don't, I don't know, it'll be just this community of non-werewolf people who are all like, hey, let's remember why we're doing this, let's think about them. You know, if you pray to the god, goddess that is of werewolves, praying to her that, like, they will 
see past this crazy animalistic mindset that they're about to go through, that they don't get hurt, that they don't hurt others, um, and that sort of thing. So they'll kind of get together in secret to remember kind of why they're doing that. Sure, so this is a counterculture that is secretive. Like, the people, the, the country of Rodneff does not recognize the order of the Templar of the Moon. Right, 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 right. They... I don't know if I would call it a secret, because people know that there are werewolf advocates out there. It's just not... Their location. Appreciated. Right, they don't know their location, and it's not appreciated. It is seen as, like, you people are crazy. Why are you harboring werewolves? you're almost, you're causing more harm than good, is what Rodenef would think. Okay. That's yeah. fair. Do you want to talk a little bit more, like, uh, you kind of alluded to this character who was born of a werewolf and a human and has the ability to maintain their, mm -hmm. me the, the, their mental state while in a you look excited. Do you want to talk about that a little I bit more? I just wrote that down. You just wrote it is that a down. Single sentence it, is a... On, it is a single sentence on a um, underneath myth, myth and legends. Okay. And I'm kind of content to just leave it there. Just a horrifying okay. idea. Like a horrifying, <laughs> horrifying idea. incredible, cool, maybe a little scary. I wouldn't necessarily. Me, me personally, I don't see that as like a horrifying idea. Mm -hmm. Um. To me, looking at something like that and saying, oh, there's an individual who was born of a werewolf, and had, whereas everyone else just kind of like, when they go into full werewolf form, they rage out and they go into this savage, like, animalistic form. There's the one guy who doesn't do that. Right. And really, that just brings me back to Underworld. And I'm like, please. <laughs> please, for the love of God, give me Lucian. <laughs> like, oh boy. No, he's we'll my see. he's my boy. No, we'll see where we'll see where he ends up, but yeah, we'll see where that ends up. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right. What did you come up with? <sighs> so <sighs> I came up with something interesting. Um, interesting, and because I'm not entirely sure to to me when I'm writing them they seem very much kind of like an antagonistic feature mm -hmm. in many ways. Um, and I'm sure you'll see why here in, in a little bit. Uh, basically, so I was in Nora. I worked on Nora. And uh, the group, the counterculture that I came up with was a group called the Sons of the Stars. Uh, n kind of one of the big motifs with Nora is that uh, there is a lot to do with cosmology with uh, astrology, excuse me, astrology and cosmology. Why would, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Not cosmetology. Am right, I no, that yeah, right? I don't know. Astrology, we're talking about stars, right? We're talking about stars, okay. yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, astrology in the fact that like the ruling in the ancient days um, after the demons were all felled, um, there came the uh, the only gods, necessarily, that the people could turn to were the constellations. They were the only things that were left. Mm -hmm. um, because there weren't any spirits running around, or there wasn't anyone proclaiming that they were a god. It was a quiet world after the demons were felled. Mm -hmm. um, so they turned to the stars. So the culture um, developed into this very heavy, kind of imperialist, uh, pseudo... Like, very Dark Ages Europe where there is a liege lord and all of his banner lords and sworn swords that like police and hold his lands for him and they all are like loyal to him and whatever. Right. That's kind of where Nora came about. That's how Nora worked for a very long time until um, an individual who is referred to as the derelict king. And I think I'm gonna talk more about him in another video. Mm -hmm. I think in, there's a prompt coming up shortly where we talk about a title, and I'm pr almost positive oh. I know who I'm going to talk about with that <laughs> one, um, and it's probably him. But basically, there's been there was this whole political shift mm -hmm. uh, in Nora, and that is where we come to the understanding. That's where the Sons of the Stars come into play. And basically, um, when this political shift happened, the old way was done away with and thrown away with for a more 
dare I say, progressive and pseudo nihilistic kind of way, uh, mentality and political scheme. Um, we went from having 12 kings to one single high king who ruled the entire world and the former zodiac kings were now the zodiac lords and they governed the 12 like large plots of land got it um but were subservient to the abyssal throne as mm -hmm. what is referred to um and there's some nuancey things that i'm sure i'll get into at another point but the sons of the stars are essentially the remnants of the disgraced lords and disowned sons of that ancient of not ancient but of that tradition mm -hmm. of that political like structure that they had um as i was writing this i was getting slight golden company vibes from a song of ice and fire got it um but they're not a mercenary company first and foremost <laughs> second off there's nowhere for them to hide to be like populated and be popular or anything like that mm -hmm. they are seen as an anti-establishment and terrorist like terrorist group Got it. by the throne by the established throne and so like all of the other like all the zodiac lords who rule across the world or have been told if you find any of them you have to kill them right take them out <laughs> take them yeah. down imprison them torture them do what you have to do get them get them out of here yeah. um because they are uh using what funds that they can come up with and what sympathy they can accrue from the common folk um, and whatever they can, whatever schemes that they can plot, whatever manipulation to try to rebuild their own power and take back what, um, what traditionally was theirs and what they see as their birthright. Uh, so kind of an antagonistic force, and I know it gets really, really non-PC here. Okay. <laughs> um, in terms of the way that it, I went into their customs, I went into their ideals a little bit, more or less their ideals. Uh, but I did do a little thing with the naming scheme that I thought was really interesting. Their family names, I don't have anything written down in terms of family names, um, but according to Nora, or within Nora, their family names are dictated by their constellation that they're connected to. So we have the Leo family, we have the Sagittarius family, we have the Serpens family, mm -hmm. and the Draco family, like, across the, and many more across the board. Um, these these folk, however, have perverted their names and altered their names in such a way um, to basically bring about their own new newfound prestige in themselves, trying to like push away what is being established as prestigious and Got create it. their own. Mm -hmm. So it's the, kind of the similar way with when people um, immigrated from Europe to America to escape persecution and they changed their name slightly, like they dropped yeah, a yeah, Y yeah. off the end of it. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what I'm getting at here. Oh. Um, so as you're looking through the catalog of names in all of Nora, you're like, okay, so constellation, 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 something having to do with astrology, and then you get to the one name that's just like a little bit weird. Right. Like, huh, I feel like something's missing something's here. Something's missing. Probably a member of the Sons of the stars Yikes. um and i thought that was really interesting to get into with the naming scheme because i can't i know you're probably gonna get lost in yours but i don't feel like i it's not a culture that really allows you to go into like de detailing every single name mm -hmm. it's more or less just broad strokes what can i cover here right um then we kind of talk about uh their culture um, cultural heritage, basically building off of that idea of that former imperialist system. Um, they're incredibly patriarchal. Incredibly, like, toxically patriarchal. Mm -hmm. To the point where I think I go into detail here, um, at one point here in the gender roles, that, like, war is the duty of men, ruling is the duty of men, and women are to be subservient and, uh, supportive to their husbands or paramours. Um, however, they are, women are also ta taught that uh, poisons and their words can, and their bodies can be used as weapons, and they are encouraged to hone them to a fine edge. I really don't. I don't agree with that. First and foremost, no, 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 no. I don't yeah, agree yeah, with this that. Is a... um, right. However, this is kind of the way that I'm thinking. 
they would work and how um, to really set the the, the uh, separation between the sons of the stars and what is the mm-hmm. current regime, quote mm-hmm. unquote. Um, not to say that like the current regime is like sparkling and shiny and right. like, shiny and chrome. They're not, but like these guys really just. Just to throw in more of, like, these are awful people. Yeah, these are awful right. people. This is how I broadcast it. Right. You know, subtlety is out the window <laughs> in terms of the exposition about it. Um, I guess I go into the kind of, they go, the last tab was organization. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of go into the major organizations, um, who they are or what exactly they intend to achieve here uh, in that bit. Um, talking about how uh, they don't have any established strongholds because there is constantly there's a whole branch of the military of the infernal I'm sorry of the abyssal throne that is specifically tasked with rooting them out yeah there's an entire inquisition like I'm talking Warhammer 40k levels of inquisition mm-hmm. <laughs> Let, it's Get like out. set out on these people um, so like Oftentimes they can't, they don't stay in one place longer than, you know, a week or so. Um, They might have some underground uh, established city or stronghold of some kind. Um, Otherwise they're just camping out in ruins or like hiding in plain sight. What I've talked about or what I mentioned here is that they are now, at least in recent eras or in recent years, starting to actively try to blend into society to manipulate from the shadows and work their way into places of power yeah. from a more legitimate um, standpoint because mm-hmm. they realized it over the course of their many crusades against the abyssal throne that they really can't working. muster the soldiers to deal with it. Nope. Um, when the abyssal throne can form their own army and each of the zodiac lords also has their own army that is subservient to the abyssal throne it's kind of difficult yeah, it's a, to, to it's win a this battle. it's a losing battle so they have to find other means um and in that i'm also thinking that that allows for the potential to uh, have some characters that kind of break this traditional patriarchal mold that they have mm-hmm. that um they're trying to wor- move aw- that even members of the sons of the stars are trying to move away from that idea that like we have to be at war all the time we have to like men rah 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 men all the time but like it gives the opportunity I think for a really powerful and strong female Mm -hmm. antagonistic character or just a female character in general to come through and be like no I'm gonna kick butt I'm gonna kick butt in the way that is actually effective Mm -hmm. uh so we'll we'll see you know it's uh, I'm noticing that you also went into like something that I, when I was going through the naming schemes and things like that, I started to focus on like, what are the specific names that would be in this culture versus you really focused on the ideas behind the names, which is what Mm -hmm. I like. I like that a lot better versus just being like, here are just a couple names that would be used in this culture. Mm -hmm. um, Because that allows you to branch out more. And you also focused on like, they had a couple tabs on like birth and baptism and oh yeah, yeah i yeah. thought that that was really cool in world anvil but i think the birth and baptism i thank you for bringing that up i for neglected to talk about that i think the bir- the baptism the baptismal rites and the rites of passage um is something very interesting in terms of the that idea that when we go into these things we don't have a clear idea of what we want to write about mm-hmm. and so we are led by the prompt by the uh by the document, but also by just kind of like our own creative flow to help right. flesh out some pieces that we hadn't considered and we're not going to dedicate an entire Google Doc to. Right. Like, the fact that um, in here I kind of talk about, um, I've mentioned that Nora is a world that doesn't have gods. Right. Uh, but here it kind of makes the allusion to, again, the whole idea that they turn to the stars for guide, for guidance. So here they believe in their baptismal rites that uh, they are baptized under their birth star and that star, or birth constellation, and mm-hmm. that constellation wraps them in their virtues and in their um, ideology so that they would be led to be more akin to mm-hmm. their constellation in, in a way. Right. So that's yeah. what I came up with. That's all I got. Uh... So, 
in ref in in and you know conclusion did you enjoy this one i liked this fun? one i i really did like this one um i think that once i got a clearer vision of what i was going for and i stopped getting so obsessed with just naming things <laughs> um, i think it worked out really nicely and i'm excited to keep working on it and develop it further Thank you so much for joining us today. Let us know in the comments below something that you liked about today's video, or if you have an idea that you're willing to share. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit all those buttons that everyone else bugs you about. And go check out World Anvil if you're interested. You guys have been great. I'm Kat. I'm R13. I'm still waiting on that ramen. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.